Hello everybody. So today I wasn't really sure what I was going to talk about and then I realized it's March for Life Day and I was really happy to see everybody out with their signs and everything. And then also I got the news I was watching for this also that the Congress I think it is? Hold on, let me bring it up. I had the House voted on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act or H.R. 4712. And this aims to protect babies who have managed to survive an abortion and are born alive in an abortion center. The bill states that if a baby survives an abortion, that baby is entitled to the same level of care as any other baby of a similar age, no matter how delivered, would receive. The bill requires that living babies be transported to a hospital for care instead of being left to the devices of the abortionist. The bill also establishes penalties if health professionals do not provide this level of care. It also allows the mother to sue if her living baby is killed by intent or neglect. So I'm very happy to hear this because I know a lot of times there are people who have survived abortions in differing stages of that abortion and they're alive today to tell the tale about it. No thanks to the people who were aborting them. So, I'm very happy to hear that's a law now. We should not, I think it's common sense not to kill your kids, but I think that since people are not going on common sense anymore, um, it's good to have laws in place to protect children. So, I wanted to kind of go sort of through my, I did an abortion video before, but this is sort of like why I'm pro-life. And I always sort of have been. I don't think anybody should come over and kill anyone at any stage of their life. I think that's just wrong. I would not want someone to do that to me. I don't think it's right for someone to do it to someone else. The only time I think it's okay to kill someone is in self-defense. So either, either in defense of the community or in defense of yourself. Or in defense of your family. Right? So before I was a Christian, I had an old world view of children, where children are good. Um, you, you had sex, you became pregnant, that's now a new person beginning their life, and there's nothing really, you don't try and change that. That's a, that's a person who had nothing to do with what you did, really. I mean, they came about because of what you did, but it's not like their fault. They weren't like, oh boy, you're having sex, now I can get born. It's not that. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm here now. Even when the child was unwanted, they usually went through with having their baby and then giving it away. Or giving him to like a surrogate to raise or something like that. So I was always sort of old world. Every person has value. Even if it's not value you can see right now, you don't kill your kid. You know, you let that child have time on earth. So then as a pagan, when, and that was just sort of as a general like atheist kind of view, right? So as a pagan, whenever I went there, I viewed children much the same way, but with a, a new caveat, right? So in paganism, there's this idea of children where they're kind of coveted. If you're a woman, you want to have a child because it creates for you extra power. So if you cast or you or you read the t cards or whatever, when you're pregnant, you get the extra energies from the child. And there's a greater flow of power from the goddess because you're fulfilling your, um, your, your goal on earth as a woman, you know, your, your reason for being here as, as it were. So they had this belief on the light side that if you have your child, it's a, it's a major representation of the power of creation that flows to the goddess, right? So then on the darker side of paganism, children are basically viewed as a power battery. If you have a child's blood or hair or something, then whatever dark spell you're trying to do has more power. So for me, whenever I was a pagan, children were powerful. They, you should always have a kid. There should always be children around because the more kids that are around, the more power from the goddess flows into your area or into your coven or whatever. And it doesn't matter how you got that kid. 
just that you had a kid. There are darker, even darker um, things on the dark side of paganism where you must, sex is a big, big part of it. And in order to complete their ritual, then you have to like have a kid. Having a kid's the ultimate idea. But you don't keep the kid, you give it away. It's sort of, it's, it's very old world. But anyway, when I abandoned paganism, I then went and became a Christian. Children are considered a good thing to God, right? They're a blessing and a gift. So that's basically where I've stayed. Some of my older beliefs as far as, you know, you don't stop a child from growing. You don't do any of that stuff. Stayed and then it, then it was overlaid with my Christian beliefs as far as children are a good thing. Uh, a child, you know, I believe God loves you, me. Uh, a child who doesn't look like everyone else. And he wants them all to have life, to have experiences, to grow up, to know him, to know love, all of this stuff. And, you know, that's just having life more abundantly. So I, I just happen to agree with that. <laughs> I think scientifically speaking, we all know these are children. Even from conception, we know that these are children. So, like I said in my other abortion video, there's uh, lots of evidence for that. The, there's the association, the pediatric association that says that that is their stance on it. So that's where I stand with it too, as far as scientifically. As far as I can tell, people who want to have abortions and everything else, that you may feel hopeless, but it, but in no way is killing your kid better. <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that out there. I know if some people feel helpless. There's lots of help out there for you. I personally have offered to at least two or three ladies, I will adopt your child. Don't kill him. Okay, I think this is something else that happens a lot in the Christian community. Uh, and I saw it in the pagan community too, where if someone didn't want a kid, they were like, well, just have the kid and we will raise him. Especially if it was like, depending on where you were in the sect, sometimes boys were better, sometimes girls, but they were always like, have your baby. There's someone here who will take care of it. So, <clears throat> especially old world paganism, if anybody's into that, children are, a, they like that. So, um, I have offered for at least two to three, three women, I think, if you have your baby, I will adopt your baby straight out. And that, that scares some people. They think, oh my gosh, you want my baby? I was like, yes. Your baby deserves life. Don't do this to yourself. Abortion is not what they tell you. You're going to hurt yourself. It's, it's not going to be what you think it is. So none of these ladies took me up on my offer. They all had abortions and they all got hurt from it. I've not seen or ha had the experience of one person who went through an abortion and was okie dokie the next day. They all had the post-abortion depression. They all had major bleeding. They all had to take time off of work. This is not you. This is not a, a, a small thing that, that a person does when they have an abortion. So that's all I wanted to say today. I uh, hope to be back tomorrow, guys. So far, I'm doing a pretty good job on my streak of doing this every day. So... Until um, later, guys, if you're watching this and you're considering an abortion, at me on Twitter, and I will adopt your kid. I'm not even joking. I will drive to wherever you are and pick that baby up. And I'm just going to put that out there right now. I believe in adoption. I believe that people who are having choosing to have babies and need help should get it. And I believe the church should do it. So, until tomorrow, guys, I will talk to you later.